The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with I'm Taking a Fancy to You from an old Chicago. <laughs> nicest things about Jell-O is the easy way you can dress it up in a dozen different styles, like Jell-O cubes, for instance. Shimmering raspberry Jell-O molded firm in a shallow pan, then cut into colorful little cubes and piled in sherbet glasses. Or uh, strawberry Jell-O tarts. Fruit-rich strawberry Jell-O combined with luscious fresh berries and a chilled firm in big tart shells. Ah, that's swell. And so is whipped lime Jell-O. All you do is chill until it's cold and syrupy. Then whip it up in a bowl of cracked ice until it's fluffy and thick like whipped cream with a lovely, foamy green color. There are lots of other Jell-O tricks you'll think of to add interest and variety to your meals. And the best part of it is, Jell-O is so quick and easy to prepare, so economical, you can serve it just as often as you like. Be sure to get genuine Jell-O, though, for Jell-O brings you that delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor. A deep, rich, wonderful fruit flavor that makes every Jell-O dish a three-star hit. So when you buy, look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. a fancy to you played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you to Jack Benny's dressing room at the Paramount Studio. It's Jack's first day in his new picture. Take it away, Paramount! <laughs> I hate to see that he will turn go down. I hate to see that he will Roger. turn go down. Now, for the last time, will you please stop singing? I'm trying to memorize my lines. Okay. I can't concentrate with all that noise going on. You know, your voice is nothing to write home about. Even if it was, I couldn't. Be quiet. You clean up this dressing room a little bit. I'm expecting Miss Joan Bennett in here to rehearse the scene we're going to shoot today. Is that the scene where you're hanging out of the window upside down? Yes, I wasn't going to do it at first, but they finally talked me into it. I knew they would. You got about as much willpower as me in a chicken coop. Well, I just gave in to keep Paramount happy. Besides that, my option had shooting pains last night. <laughs> Rochester, hand me my gray suit. I can't be standing around in my shorts when Miss Bennett comes in. That's right. They're all kind of loud. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Hey, boss, didn't let your makeup man stand outside there? Where? Oh, yes. Hey, no, no. I'm going to work in a little while. I'm going to put some makeup on me. That's the scene where you're sticking out of a window by your heels, isn't it? Yes. Well, you won't need any makeup. Your coat will hang down over your face. <laughs> over my face? Not if I have anything to say about it. You won't. So long. <laughs> well, that settles it, Rochester. I'm not going to do that scene. You can bet on that. You, I lose on it, too. Shut up and give me that phone. Operator, get me Mr. Hornblow, the producer, and hurry. Rochester, I asked you to get me my gray suit. Oh, God, I can't relax for a second while I'm here. That's too bad about you. If you didn't know me so much, I'd have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> All right, now go in and get my... Hello? Hello, Mr. Hornblow. Now, listen, I agreed to play that crazy window scene, but I didn't know that my coat was going to hang down over my face. How will people know it's me? By my feet? Listen, Mr. Hornblow, all feet look alike. Oh, well, you're just saying that to be nice. <laughs> But look, now look, here's the trouble. In the first scene, my face is covered up by my coat. In the next scene, I go to a masked ball, so I'm covered up again. And then in the third scene, I'm sitting in a barber's chair with a hot towel over my face. My goodness, when do I unveil? <laughs> what? Well, all right, you're the boss, but I tell you one thing, Mr. Hornblow. When I'm in the barber shop under that hot towel, I better have sparkling dialogue. Goodbye. Hmm, I don't know why I ever let people talk me into things. Rochester, I told you Miss Bennett will be here any minute. Now, where's my gray suit? Here's the pants, boss. I just pressed them. Thanks. Press them? Why, you burnt them. Look at that spot right there. Where? Right there on the seat. That is a little crisp, ain't it? <laughs> Fine, burnt pants. Now what are we going to do? I don't know. If there was toast, I could scrape them. <laughs> 
important thing. I got two pair of pants with this suit. Well, that must be Miss Miller. Quick, Rock, just to help me out with my pants. Okay. Make it snappy. Just a minute. Hurry up, Rock. Here you are. Here you are. Okay. All right, you can come in now. Hiya, Jack, old boy. What was the delay? Oh, it's you, Phil. I thought it was Joan Bennett, so I put my trousers on in a hurry. You sure did. You got one leg left over. Oh, yes. I thought they were a little tight. Uh, here, Rock, I'll help you get this on right. So you're expecting Joan Bennett, huh, Jack? I'll have to stick around and meet her. Oh, fine. I don't mind if you stay, but for heaven's sake, Phil, the minute I introduce you to Joan, don't ask for her phone number. I won't. Thanks. I got it. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You said you didn't know Joan Bennett. How can you have her phone number? She's got a maid, hasn't she? <laughs> oh, so you go around with her maid, eh? Hey, Mr. Harris, you're the ladies' man. The ladies' man, if he took some of that padding out of his coat, he wouldn't be so much. I hate anybody that tries to deceive people about their physique. You should talk. You tried to buy a coat with built-in muscles. <laughs> I did not. I merely told my tailor to allow for them. But you haven't got any muscles. Well, I'm taking a course of exercises, and they'll be along any minute. <laughs> Bennett would get here so we could start rehearsing. There's a phone, Mr. Bennett. Well, why don't you answer it? It ain't for me. <laughs> well, don't put yourself out. Hello? Oh, hello, Kenny. You are? Well, we'll be listening in. Yes, you can come over later. Goodbye, Kenny. Hey, Phil, turn on the radio. Kenny's going to sing a song. Okay. I used to see that evening. Quiet, Rochester. We want to hear Kenny. <laughs> Well, your orchestra boys play much better when you're not there to lead them. Yeah, I get them all mixed up. <laughs> you sure do. Rochester, I asked you a thousand times to clean up this dressing room. Now look at those socks dangling on the chandelier. Why don't you take them down? They ain't dry yet. Oh. <laughs> Another thing, I told you to plug up that hole in the floor. The floor is full of holes. Did you look at those mouse traps I set last night? Yes, sir. We caught three mice, two rats, and a beaver. <laughs> A beaver? I was wondering who built that dam in the bathtub. <laughs> Gee whiz, Jack, I don't see why Paramount doesn't give you a better dressing room. This place is a mess. Well, it is a little bohemian, Phil, if that's what you mean. <laughs> oh, that must be Jones. Just a moment. Rochester, empty those ashtrays. Yes, sir. Come in. 
I guess there you go to have. Hello, Jack. Hiya, Jack. I surprised to see it. Oh, so it's you guys. Yes, this being your first day on the picture, we just dropped in to wish you luck. We won't be in the way, will we, Jack? No, Kenny, but I want you all to behave yourselves. Uh, Joan Bennett is coming here any minute for rehearsal. Gosh, Jack, you even have the nerve to invite her over here to this dump. Looks like Mr. Zucker's wastebasket. <laughs> Listen, Mary, there's nothing wrong with my dressing room. It's very comfortable. And look at that rug there. It says Idaho potatoes on it. <laughs> Well, Idaho is a beautiful state. <laughs> you want to know something? Plenty of big stars have occupied this dressing room. You know who had it before me? Yeah, Tom Nixon Horse. <laughs> Did not. This room was occupied by Carol Lombard. Well, she left the bridle on the coat rack. <laughs> not a bridle. That's the harness I wear when I'm hanging out of the window. Hanging out of the window? I thought you said last week you weren't going to do that thing. Well, I wasn't, but I had a conference with Mr. Hornblow, and, well, he convinced me that I ought to do it. You know, Jack, you haven't got any backbone at all. You let people talk you into anything. Mary's right, Jack. You're just a chump. A chump? I told him that, but he wouldn't listen to me. Shut up, Roger. <laughs> now, look, Mary, I've got a mind of my own, and neither Mr. Hornblow nor anyone else can sway me. Not much. No. You're the kind of a guy who goes into a barber shop for a shave and comes out with a haircut, a manicure, and a ticket on a turkey raffle. Well, that has nothing to do with my picture, and besides, I haven't been in a barber shop for months. And where'd you get that haircut? <laughs> It's our ruler. It's not my fault. He wouldn't hold still. <laughs> well, I was nervous. Now, Jack, don't tell me that you make Rochester cut your hair. Well, he told me he used to be a barber. I told you where I got fired, too. Oh, sure. <laughs> Say, Jack. What is it, Danny? I was just thinking of something. As long as you're going to do that scene where you're falling on your head, why don't you take... Danny, a... I won't fall on my head. I'm going to hang out of a window, and I'm going to have a harness around my stomach. Are you going to have a bit in your mouth, too? <laughs> no, Kenny, it's to hold me up. I'm not going to, I'm not going to play the part of a horse. Part of a horse? Quiet. <laughs> now, listen, fellas, I've had enough of this silly chatter. I'm nervous today, so if you want to stay here, be quiet. Well, quit hammering on that door and come in. I'm sorry, Jack. I didn't mean to disturb you. Oh, it's you, Joan. Well, I'm terribly sorry, Joan. I must apologize. If I know it was you, I wouldn't have shouted like that. You want me to go out and come in again? Oh, no. No. <laughs> Say, you've never been over here before, have you, Joan? No, I haven't, Jack. This is quite a dressing room you've got. Oh, it's nothing much. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> Well, I was going to have it redecorated, but you know, one never knows how long one's going to be here, does one? Well, you're right. One never can tell about one's job. And that's the one. <laughs> uh, Mary, you little mink. <laughs> Say, Joan, I want you to meet my radio gang. This is Kenny Baker, our young tenor. Hello, Kenny. How do you do, Miss Bennett? I've enjoyed your singing so much. Really, I think you have a very fine voice. I don't care whether you mean that or not. You're my dream girl. <laughs> Dream girl. What do you like when he's awake? <laughs> I don't know. And Joan, uh, this is Phil Harris, our orchestra leader. Oh, so this is the curly headed heartbreaker I've heard so much about. Yes, he's our corny Casanova. <laughs> How are you, Phil? How do you do, Miss Bennett? It's going to be nice knowing you. You better be careful there, Joan. You're still a pretty fast worker. He is? Yeah, man. <laughs> First thing you know, he'll ask you to go to the Trocadero with him. Well, I wouldn't dare go out with Phil. Why not? My maid would never forgive me. <laughs> hey, that's very good, Joan. You're the first one that ever put Phil in his place. And now I want you to meet our little leading lady, Mary Livingston. Hello, Mary. I bet you're as old as I am. <laughs> a blonde if I wanted to. Mary, that's very impolite. Now, you kiss Joan and make up. I won't. Then I will. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, no. Well, we're right back where we started from. <laughs> now, Joan, last but not lightest, I want you to meet our announcer, Don Wilson. Well, how do you do, Miss Bennett? May I tell you how thrilled I am to meet you? Yes, do. Really, my, my heart is just going pity-pat. Mine's not. Now, Mary, <laughs> 
Well, thank you, Mr. Wilson. And I always get a kick out of the way you talk about Jell-O. You sound as though you're pretty crazy about it. Well, really, I am, Miss Bennett. Oh, he is. He is. <laughs> when I say that Jell-O is the most tempting, delicious, and economical dessert, mm-hmm. and that it tastes twice as good as ever before, I say it with every fiber of my being. And that's a lot of fiber, Jell-O. <laughs> I tell you, Miss Bennett, I could stand here for hours and talk about Jell-O. We know you could, Dan, but we've got to rehearse. Now, Joan, how about you and I going over these lines when I'm hanging upside down out of the window? Oh, you mean that thing where you fall on your head? Joan, I'm not going to fall on my head. That was merely an accident at rehearsal. Well, it was very funny. Funny? Especially when you bounced. <laughs> she would think it was funny. Well, it was funny, and shut up. <laughs> Joe, let's go over that scene once anyway. Now, you're passing by, and I'm hanging out of the window. I've got the first line. Okay. <clears throat> oh, Vivian. Vivian. Conrad, why are you hanging out of that window? Are you crazy? No, Vivian. I'm head under heels in love. <laughs> Vivian, there's something I must tell you. I know what you're going to say, Conrad. But it can never be. Why not, dearest? You love me, don't you? Yes. The father will never permit our marriage. He says you have no money to support me. He's got money, all right, but he won't part with it. Now go in the other room. Wait a minute. And keep quiet. Go ahead, Joan. Oh, Conrad, why must we continue like this? Neither of us is happy. Let's call everything off. What? Call everything off? That's so loud, you'll get him on an idea. <laughs> Now, Mary, we're trying to rehearse. Continue, Joan. Oh, just a minute. Come in. They're ready on the set for you, Miss Bennett. I'll be right there. They want me to? Yes, you can come along. <laughs> well, that's sweet of you. Come on, Joan. We better get over there. Can we come along too, Jack? Oh, sure, all of you. Say, Rochester, run across the street to the camera shop and buy six rolls of moving picture film. Okay. But, Jack, what are you buying that for? Well, I'm going to shoot a scene. I've got to have film, don't I? But the studio finishes that. They do? Why, for the last three pictures, I've been buying my own. I'm going to see Mr. Zucker about this. Come on, gang. I'll get a refund or else. Imagine the head of the studio. 
Rosario doesn't know me from Bing Crosby. He does on payday. <laughs> If you don't marry, he's like that with everybody. He just can't remember names. Hello, Mr. Zucker. Hello, Tammy. Hmm. <laughs> now, that was just a wild guess. That's all. Well, I'll see. Hello, Mr. Zucker. Hello, Herman. <laughs> You're right, Jack. You see, I told you. Oh, say, Jack, who's that tall fellow way over there in the corner talking to John Bennett? Where? Oh, that's Mitch Lyson, the director. Hiya, Mitch. You're right with you, Jack. <laughs> Excuse me a minute, fellas. I've got to go over there and see him. Say, Mitch, I want to tell you something before Jack gets over here. What is it, John? Anything wrong? Well, I'm not one to complain, and I like Jack personally very much, but... But what? What's the trouble? Well, I rehearsed with him two or three times, and frankly, Mitch, we cannot play a love scene. Yeah, I know, John, but we can't get Gable for that kind of money. <laughs> well, I'd be willing to chip in. <laughs> But I'm afraid it's too late now. You know, Mitch Jack's a very sweet fellow and all that, but he hasn't any more sex appeal on a fresh vegetable plate. <laughs> he doesn't seem to have any fire. Well, I did everything I could. I even fed him sterno. <laughs> Just the same, Mitch. I think that... Quiet. Here he comes. Hiya, Mitch. Well, here I am. Round to go. We're just about ready for you, Jack. Okay. Light him up, boys. Now, quiet, everybody. Let's settle down. Well, Joan, do you think we'd better run through our love scene again before we shoot it? No, Jack. You're as good now as you'll ever be. <laughs> oh, thank you, Joan. Thank you. You know, none of us is perfect. Say, Miss, do you mind if my gang sticks around and watches the scene? No, not as long as they're quiet. Oh, they'll be quiet, all right, won't you, kids? Sure. Sure. Not me. I'm a shredder. <laughs> Kenny. We're all ready for you, Mitch. Okay. Oh, that's Teddy Tetzlaff, fellas, our cameraman. He's one of the best. Hello, Teddy. How are you, Jeffrey? <laughs> Jeffrey, I don't even know anybody by that name. It's going to be a great picture. I've got a blind cameraman. <laughs> you think that's something? The star man is Jeff. He is not. Hello, Chuck. Hey. <laughs> well, that's news to me. All right, Jack Jones. We'll have one good rehearsal and then we'll shoot the theme. Now, Jack, you climb up there in the window. Okay, Mitch. Hey, give me a booze, somebody. Hey, right on. Thanks, Mr. Zucker. <laughs> it's a democratic studio. <laughs> now, John, we'll take it from where Jack stops you as you pass by his window. You mean right here? Yes. You ready, Jack? Yep, I'm up here on the windowsill. All right, now get a good grip of your feet and hang all the way down. Come on, come on. Don't be afraid. Okay. <laughs> oh, there goes all my chains. <laughs> hey, get away from there, you. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Zucker. <laughs> well, I'm fat, Mitch. All right, ready for rehearsal. Action. Go ahead, Jack. Oh, Vivian. Vivian. Comrade, why are you hanging out of that window? Hold you? it, hold it. Oh, uh, Jack. Please don't blush when you're talking to Joan. You're not supposed to be bashful in this thing. But, Mitch, I'm not blushing. You are, too. Your face is all red. Well, naturally it's red. I'm hanging upside down and the blood is rushing to my head. Well, stop it. Stop it. What do you want me to do? Put a detour sign in my stomach? You're just being unreasonable. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Mary? Your face isn't red anymore. It's blue. Oh, go away. All right, now take the scene again. Uh, and Jack, remember, when you start proposing to Joan, be sure and get down on your knees. But, Mitch, how can I get down on my knees when I'm hanging out of a window? Like I'll fall down and break my neck. All right, what's the difference? It's only a rehearsal. Oh, this is awful. Say, Jack. Yes. How would you get to the back and walk speaking right now? Never mind. <laughs> Please, Mitch, let's get going here. I can't hang like this all day. All right, let's try it again. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Lyson. Uh, my name is Don Wilson. Uh, well, well, what are you on your mind? Well, uh, I was just thinking, uh, as Jack is so identified with Jell-O, couldn't you have him fall out of the window into a bowl of sliced bananas? <laughs> sliced bananas? Now, that would be corny. <laughs> now, never mind that. Let's get through with this scene. I'm very uncomfortable here. All right, we'll shoot it this time. Light him up. All right, on the set. We're turning. All right, ready? Right, action. Oh, Vivian. 
Vivian. Conrad, why are you hanging out of that window? Are you crazy? No, but Lyson is. <laughs> Vivian, there's something I must say to you. I know what you're going to say, Conrad, but it can never be. But why not, dearest? You love me, don't you? Lyson! <laughs> Lyson! Jack, I'll bring you back a sandwich. Thanks, Mrs. Zucker. Gee, he's a nice fella. If you want to make your family happy, just say homemade strawberry ice cream for dessert. Then give them the best they ever tasted. Smooth and creamy, luscious with that flavor of real strawberries, and uh, easy to make. Use Jello Freezing Mix for a perfect strawberry ice cream. A lovely color, a perfect mixture, smooth and mellow and creamy. And what a taste. For in Jello Freezing Mix, you'll find real sliced strawberries and their own sweetened juice. Tempting and delicious as only real strawberries can be. And it's so easy to make, the, the youngsters can do it. All you do is open a can of Jell-O freezing mix, add milk and some whipped cream, and pour into the freezing tray of your refrigerator. Stir just once while it's freezing and get six servings of swell ice cream with that real homemade goodness. We like all six luscious flavors, strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, orange, pineapple, fruity, fruity, and maple walnut. So why wait? Have a delicious treat tomorrow night. Homemade ice cream for dessert made just perfect with Jell-O freezing mix. number of the 37th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I want to thank Joan Bennett and Mitch Lyson for coming over here tonight and helping us out. Hey, Jack. Hi there, Mary. I was only kidding before. I think Joan is awfully cute. Yeah. And you know what? What? I'm going out to dinner with Mitch Lyson. You are? Well, then I'm going out with Joan. Are you ready, Joan? Right here, Jack. Oh, come on. Let's go. How about Mitch and I have a better time than you two? So do I. <laughs> Good night, folks. Kenny Baker appears on the Jell-O program through courtesy of Mother Roy Productions. This is the National Broadcasting Company.